Greetings! I'm Kevin and today we're playing my little TBR game called Ya yeah, TBR Sing. So this is how Yeti BRC works. I do seven rolls, so I get to fill out seven of these little things. I hope all of you are familiar with Yeti, but if you aren't, you roll five dice and you get to roll them three times. Each roll you mark one, and for example, here is ones. So if you get three ones for your first roll for, free, for the three rolls that are included in the first roll, you get to write three here next to the ones. Or you can write three next to here because you get three ones. You can see? So that is the general gist of it. To help me pick books, I have three cards. A red, a blue, and a yellow. Red is title. And because I don't want to be wasteful, the red cards on the opposite side is a number. Oh, it's up there. It's, it's a number. So in this case, it's 18, which correlates to a number on my Goodreads. So if I go to Goodreads and want to read, they are numbered. And I think if you have Goodreads too, you can just check your want to read and you see that they are numbered. So you can check what is number 18 for you. I don't, I have no idea what number 18 and that is also kind of like the fun thing with these red cards that I have no idea which book it is. But the red cards are what I like to call amazing pile. If I get the highest possible amount of points for a specific row, so if I get for like once, the first one, uh, which is just once, if I get five ones, that is the highest possible amount of points that I can get for once. That would mean that I have the highest amount of points, which means that I get a title, which is from the amazing pile. So that is red cards. If I get lowest possible or just lower than highest possible, so if I have any point that is not the highest possible, I get a yellow card. So this is just a prompt, just a general prompt. In this case, the example here is superhero, which means that the prompt is superhero. So unlike the red card, this is me looking and like searching like which book has superheroes in it or a superhero in it that I could read. So that is what this means. But if you played Yahtzee yourself, you know that it's common to cross out. So if I cross something out, I get the blue card. So the blue card is punishment card. And this example is over 800 pages. So over 800 pages, that is a long book. That is a big book, which means that it's, it's a punishment. So. As I said, if I cross something out, it's a blue card. If I get the highest possible for this row, for one of these rows, I take the red card. If I get any point that is not the highest possible, I get a yellow card, a prompt card. But we have bonus and total. So these also come into play because I have more cards. So for bonus, it's you get a bonus if the, your total is over 63 points and you don't get a bonus which is 50 points if you don't get 63 points or more if i would get 63 points on the total i would get 50 point bonus but i would also get an advantage card so i have skip which is if you get a card you don't want you can skip it the second one, I have these numbered up in the corner, if you can see it. So the second one is a roll again. So if the dies are not in my favor, I get to roll again. The next one is boost number one. I love the boosts. So this one is roll one dice to add to the points. Then we have boost two, which is the same thing, but with two dice. Double the fun, you know? The last one is wild card. So this one is pick any book you want regardless of prompt or title. So that's it. And all of these um, advantage cards, once they've been played, 
they're out of use. So bonus is 50 points and an advantage card. But if I get less than 63 points, and if I get 62 or 61 or whatever that is less than 63, I get a punishment card. So that is not fun because I could end up with a prompt like a book with over 800 pages and I don't want that right now, okay? And as I said for total and bonus, it's the same thing with total down here. So if I get a total of more than 300 points, I get an advantage card. And I can have as many advantage cards as possible. Okay, a maximum of two. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to, like, if I get an advantage card, I think I'm gonna use it pretty quickly. Advantage cards are supposed to help me with picking books. So what's the point of having an advantage card if I'm just gonna sit on them? Yeah, so that is a little of how my TBR game works. So let's get into playing the game. Roll number one. Okay, I'm gonna go with the fives, so. Ooh, another five. And last roll. Are you serious? Are you serious? I mean, you have to see this too, right? I mean, five is my favorite number, so this was fun. <laughs> um, so that just leaves the question. So should I get it on 25 on fives here? Or should I have it on Yatsi? I'm gonna take it on Yatsi. So 50 points go in there. So great start. And so because I reached the uh, maximum point total for that one, I get a title card, which is the red card. And the title is number 22 on my Goodreads list. So, as you just saw, that was my first turn, and oh my god, I got a Yahtzee? What is my favorite number? Uh, the number five has never let me down so far. I hope it won't. Let's see. But I got a Yahtzee for the first one, which means I got 50 points for Yahtzee, which is the highest possible, and as you remember, highest possible is a red card, and I got a red card and I got the number 22 and the number 22 correlates to the book How Not to Ask a Boy to Prom by S.J. Gosley. I assume that's how it's pronounced so that is the first book I'm going to read thus or the first book picked for my January TBR. And since I don't have a physical copy of this book, I am going to read the ebook via Scribd. I have a membership on Scribd. And if you want f free 60 days, I have a link down below. But let's get into the second turn. So, moving on to the second rule. Okay, I almost have a. We, in Swedish, we say ladder, stiga. Uh, a straight, I think it's called in English, straight. So all I need is this as a five. Yep, I got a small straight. <laughs> and that is 15 points. Go in here. So since that is the maximum point total for a small straight, which I'm just going to call it small straight from now on. That means I get another title card and this time it's number eight. So we're off to another great start, another highest possible. So as you saw, I got this red card, which is number eight and number eight is a um, TBR veteran because the lowest numbers on Goodreads on the one to read where you have like the, the numbered list 
the lowest number is the uh, the book that has been on your tbr shelf on goodreads the longest so number eight no surprise there it's been on my tbr shelf since 2019 so not that long but it is the inexplicable logic of my life by benjamin aliri sands and i don't own this book either so i'm going to read it via ebook on script as well as um, as through audiobook on Audible. So that is the second book on my January TBR. Third out of seven rolls. That is a four and we have three fives. Um, I'm gonna go with the fives again. They are my lucky number after all. And last roll for this one another five so that is 20 so 20 goes in fives here and because that is not the highest possible because the highest possible for fives is 25 that means i will just get a prompt so the prompt is romance so my third turn, my third roll, whatever, I got my first yellow card. So yellow card, prompt card, and this little thing came up with romance. Lucy, Lucy, yeah, come here, come here. So now I have quite a lot of romance novels. If you can see here, these are my TBR shelves, all three of them. I know you can't see the bottom very well but I'm going to skim through them and see what I'm feeling. Also four books on these shelves are recently added. If you want to know which four books you should check out my first video which is mystery books unboxing where I unbox four packages that I ordered from Etsy shops that contained mystery books, specifically in the romance genre, so perfect for this prompt. But if you want to know um, which those four books are, check out that video. And I will link it up here, so you can just press the little white thing when it comes up. So for my first yellow card, which was the prompt romance, I have chosen The Henna Wars by Adiba Jagerdar. I'm so sorry if I'm butchering the pronunciation on your name. I promise I, I'm doing the best I can. And that's what I've heard that it's pronounced like. And I'm, please correct me if I'm wrong. Just, but she is the author of the Hannah Wars and I've heard nothing but great things about this book and yeah I'm really looking forward to reading this book so that is um that is the third book for my January TBR so roll four out of seven I'm gonna take the six this time. Okay, I, <laughs> I'm taking twos instead. So we have the twos go there. And last roll for roll four. Another two. Okay, so that went well. So that is eight for twos because I am not putting it at this one. I don't know the English name for this. Uh, for some? No, that sounds weird. That sounds very weird. <laughs> uh, I don't know what the word for this, but I'm definitely not putting it there. So eight, which is another prompt. And this time it is pink cover. And we're back with another yellow 
card. So this is the yellow card and this time we got pink cover. So as you can see behind me, I don't have that many books with yellow, with pink covers. I have, I don't know if this counts as pink. I think it's more yellow. The ones that I do have are Anne of Avonlea, but I don't want to, I don't want to continue and the Anne of Green Gables series without rereading the first book and it's been a year since I read that one so I know I'm not going to read Anne of Avonlea anytime soon and the next one is I, I think this one is more purple than pink so no and then we have Cat Cho which is a book I'm really looking forward to so this is a contender and then we have the last story of Mina Lee. This is also a contender. And then the next pink book that I own, something to talk about. So, okay. so the last book with a mostly pink cover or just I'm saying mostly pink cover so the majority since it says pink cover I'm doing like the majority of it has to be pink so the last book that I have on these shelves that are not the second or third book in a series is we just clicked by Annabelle my bookmark fell out if you saw my last video where I had ordered books from Etsy or mis I had ordered mystery books from Etsy and I unboxed them in a mystery book Christmas unboxing. You know that this, I, uh, this was sent to me by the Cozy Book Company. Here is their little business card that they included. And as you said, I ordered it, I paid for it, I bought it and the whole review was they didn't pay me to do it, it was just I wanted to support shops on Etsy that also gifted me stuff. It felt like I got a Christmas gift at the same time I was supporting bookish shops. So that was nice. These are the four pink cover books that I have. These two are Korean and Gumiho, which is Wicked Wolf by Kat Cho is based on Korean mythology where they have Gumiho which is a kind of fox woman, a girl fox, it's something amongst those lines. And then the last story of Mina Lee by Nancy Jujun Kim um, which is based in in the US, I think it's based in the US so it's an, a, a, a Korean American story. And then we have two romance books. So we have We Just Clicked and Something to Talk About. This is a female female romance and this is a female male love triangle fake dating romance. And this book has to do with an actress I think. Yeah, an, an actress, Emma, who is uh, photographed on the red carpet with her assistant. So it's kind of like a scandal Hollywood story with an actress and her assistant, female female romance, which all sounds very good. That just leaves the question, which of these four books am I going to choose? So after doing some research, I decided on the last story of Mina Lee by Nancy Jujun Kim. So this is a double, it's a kind of a generational story we follow in the past Minali Minai uh, who goes from Korea to start a new life in the US and we also follow her daughter 30 years later who is called Minali uh, who grows up in the US as a Korean American so that is this book so this is the fourth book of my January TBR so far so Let's check what the cards have in store for me or the dice have in store for me for the next book. Roll five out of seven. What is it with the fives? 
Okay, we're gonna go with the fives again because I love that number. And last roll for roll five. No, okay, so three. So I'm gonna put it at the freeze here. So that is 15 because it's three fives, which means it's a prompt. And this time it's aliens. So we have another yellow card. So we have had this with this one. We have fur, fur, fur. We have three yellow cards in a row. So this is the yellow card and the prompt is aliens. Science fiction is my favorite genre. And like after science fiction, I think my next favorite genre is romance or contemporary but i love science fiction and aliens <laughs> i love it i love space so let's see what books i have that could fit this prompt So after some searching for my bookshelves, you can see a few holes here and there. And interestingly enough, I sense a color pattern. So these five books are the books I have that contains aliens. And it's because not all science fiction books contain aliens, which is of course true, but it, I thought it would be easier to find books with this prompt. So the first book is The Fifth Gender by G. L. Carriger or Carriger. I, I pronounce it as Carriger because it's carriage and er. So I, I, I assume that's how it's pronounced. Please let me know if that's not the case. But this is a queer gender bending not gender bending, gender fluid, that's what I meant, gender fluid, story in space. So I'm excited about that. And they have alien races with tentacle hair. I think it's called tentacle hair, so I'm intrigued. Like, that sounds very interesting. The next book is Amniata by Harry Martinsson. So this is a Swedish classic from 1950s. It was first published in 1956, so this is an old book, um, a, an old story. It is an epic ballad. It's an epic ballad set in space. So it's a classic, what's the harm in trying? It's space and it's short because it has these um, poems. So instead of being just a novel in verse back when he wrote it it was just called like epic ballad so each chapter is just like poems so this one is in swedish also because i read in multiple languages but swedish is my first language so that is a contender for the aliens prompt next we have uh, quite a big book and it is Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. You may know these authors from the Illuminae series. I didn't include Illuminae even though I have them. There, you, you see Illuminae here? Because I wasn't sure if it included aliens or not. So because of that I decided not to use it. So we have Aurora Rising and this woman here that you can see, she was in cry uh, cryosleep for two centuries. And because it's kind of like these misfits coming together in space. Yes, please. And since I know it's kind of like, I've heard about this book, I've heard great things about this book, and I've heard it's kind of like a voyage thing too. So I feel like aliens have to be included some way. So that is another contender for aliens. The next book I have is Satellite by Nick Lake. First, this cover is gorgeous. I love it. And what really brought this to my attention is he's going to a place he's never been before. Home. I love that. But if you feel like 
you're unsure about this book, just let me read. We are flicked like flies by a giant hand. A roar and the space station contracts, quick as a pupil reacting to bright light as we are thrown toward the earth. And that's what it feels like. Like someone has seized us and is flinging us down. Then we do what thrown things do. We fall. So I feel like this has aliens in it. The last book that fits the prompt is The Star Host by F.T. Lukens. And this is another uh, queer thing in space. That's what I know. And this has like the star hosts is kind of like a mythological group of people and they feel very alien to me. So that's why this is included. So the book I chose for the prompt aliens is Aurora Rising because I'm really in the mood for a group of misfits exploring space. Second to last roll. Whoa, see this. Second to last roll, roll number six. Okay, I'm gonna go with threes. So bear. And nope. And last roll. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna take that as one pair. So 12 on one pair, which means it's the highest number possible, which means it's a title. Title number 38 Ooh, i have no idea what this is okay and we're back with red cards so this time we got the number 38 which on my goodreads one to read list number 38 is the tiger's daughter and that is a book i've been looking forward to reading for a while so i'm really happy um i got around to do it so I'm reading The Tiger's Daughter via uh, as an ebook on script and as a an audiobook. An audible the same as I did with or the same as I'm planning to do with the inexplicable logic of my life. That is the sixth book. Last roll. I I have to go with fives. Five started great, so they might end great. Okay, I'm changing to ones. Okay, so four in ones. Because I'm, of course, not putting it there. That would be stupid. So four goes up there, which means it's a prompt graphic novel. And we end this off with yet another yellow card. This time it's a graphic novel. So I have a few graphic novels, so I'm going to skim through them and see what I come up with. Okay, so I have, I have these four graphic novels. So, the first book is Check, Please. Book one is called Hashtag Hockey, and it's by Nugusi Ukazu. And I'm really sorry if I'm butchering the name. And please let me know um, how it's supposed to be pronounced, if you know. So it's a male-male hockey romance, and it's a graphic novel. The art style is really cute. It's very adorable. So this is the first contender for this prompt. Then we have the book Vey by Sara Bergmark Elfgren and Carl Jonsson. And this is a Swedish book and it is set in the time of the Vikings, which is honestly the time of the Vikings is the name of an actual era. In Swedish history, we call a certain amount of time the time of the Vikings, Viking at Hidden. But so this is based on the time of the Vikings and Norse mythology, which is also a religion, which was the only religion that existed 
for the Vikings or the people at that time. So this one I'm really looking forward to reading and this has a lot to do with my cultural heritage. So because Norse mythology and that religion also thrown, which funnily enough does not have a name in English. There is no name of that religion in English, which I think is... <sighs> yeah, that religion and the mythology from around this time, it's very, it's still very much surrounding everything. Like, you can see bits and pieces from this time, from the, the, the time period that inspired this book. It, it's very much present in today's Sweden, which I think is really cool. So I'm looking forward to reading this. The next two options are a lot more grim. The first one is They Called Us Enemy by George Takei and it is also written by Justin Isinger, Stephen Scott and the artist by Harmony Becker. So George Takei, you may know him as Mr. Sulu from Star Trek, which I am a big fan of Star Trek, but maybe you know him as Hero's dad in Heroes, the, the TV series. But George Takei is an amazing um, actor and he is Japanese and this graphic novel is kind of like a graphic memoir of his growing up as Japanese during the time of the war, the World War II. Um, so this, because there were camps, American concentration camps, on the back it says in a stunning graphic memoir, actor slash author slash activist George Takei revisits his haunting childhood in American concentration camps as one of 120,000 Japanese Americans imprisoned by the US government during World War II. So this will be a little heavier to read, I think, but it is incredibly important and it's a goal that I have for 2021 to read more books that deals with World War II because World War II is a subject that I have not wanted to dip my toes in at all because of me being German so I have like a lot of negative experiences growing up as German uh, as part German in Sweden I really want to learn more about it and I want to get over my fear <laughs> I really want to read this I didn't know that there were concentration camps in the US for Japanese Americans. So that is something that I'm really interested in learning about. The last option that I have for graphic novel is Illegal by Eowyn Colfer and Andrew Duncan and this is the story as it says here, One Boy's Epic Journey of Hope and Survival. So this has to do the with immigration. So this is I don't remember where he's from. It mentions Sahara Desert, so I guess Africa. But it is about a boy who immigrates to Europe. He flees to Europe. So he's a refugee and I think it's going to be very important. And I think this also has a lot of educational value because it is so relevant and it's so such um, an important topic today immigration and what it means to immigrate and flee your country i'm very proud to have an immigrant family member who fled from a war in a time where it wasn't that easy to leave and i'm very proud to have that with me as my family history but i know that as a teacher i will meet people who don't understand that fleeing your country isn't a walk in the park, it's not something you do on a whim. I think this book will be very interesting and gripping for that, for those reasons. So for the last prompt and for the last card of this January yet TBRC, I chose Illegal by Ewing Colfer and Andrew Duncan, which is illustrated by Giovanni Regano. And I think this will be a very powerful read. And I think since it is a graphic novel, I think it's going to be very impactful to see the characters and have them like come to life. And as a teacher, as an educator myself, 
I think this will have a lot of educational value as well, so I'm going to read it from both a reader standpoint as well as a teacher of upper secondary school. So I teach 16 to 19 year olds. So this is going on my TBR. So this is what we ended up with. Um, illegal for graphic novel. Aurora Rising for, for Aliens. The Last Story of Mina Lee for a cover, a book with a pink cover in the Hannah Wars for a romance book. And there we have it. And I also have the free books from the Amazing Pile, the Red Pile, which are titles. And the free that I have digitally are Tiger's Daughter, The Inexplicable Logic of My Life, and How to Not Ask a Boy to Prom. And for the first, yeah, TBR, see, this is what the sheet looks like. So we have seven down and, and seven to go. So for next turn, for February, but we're not there yet. Good reading!